my name is John. I'm a computer science student from the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, for the next two and a half months, I'm going to be living here in Tainan, a city in the south of Taiwan. Uh, I wanted to make this video to talk a little bit about what I've done so far and uh, what I plan to do for the next two and a half months. So I guess the first thing to talk about would be why I'm here. The answer is this guy right here, Chinese. Um, so I love languages. Uh, I spent a year living in Spain, learned Spanish. Um, I've studied a little French and Italian. Uh, and a couple months ago, I kind of became interested in, in learning Chinese. Uh, but computer science is hard, and uh, Chinese is hard. And um, just with my full class schedule, I couldn't ever find the time to sit down and actually study the language. So rather than try to learn the language here and there, I decided to just take a quarter off, come down to Taiwan, and uh, just study it intensively for, for three months. Um, so I'm taking one-on-one -on -one classes at the university here, two hours a day, uh, plus additional grammar and writing classes. And uh, it's coming along pretty well. Um, I hadn't really studied a whole lot of Chinese before I came here, so I definitely have been struggling to just survive uh, or function like a normal human being, um, but I'm learning a ton. Uh, it's been a while since I've started a language from scratch, so I'm at the point where everything I learn is super, super useful to me. Um, so this last week, for example, we learned directions, so like left, right, above, below, next to, behind, um, close, far, and now suddenly I have this whole new range of, of things I can express. Uh, when I ask for directions or when, I, when I'm explaining something to someone. Um, so it's really fun because every single lesson that I have, I learn all this new useful vocabulary that just opens up all these new things that I can say and, uh, and understand. So the purpose of these videos are two big things. Um, the first one is to keep all my friends and family back home up to date. I'm pretty bad about checking in and keeping in touch with everyone, so this is kind of an easy way for me to just send it out there and everyone else can kind of see it. Um, and the second reason is to keep myself on track for learning the language and doing interesting things while I'm here. Um, I remember when I was abroad in Spain, there was a period of about two weeks where I kind of just got tired of having to speak a foreign language and having people not really understand me and not fitting into the, into the culture. Um, and so I spent a lot of time in my room just kind of like not doing anything, uh, which is stupid when you're in a foreign country. I mean, you should be exploring and meeting people and learning new things. Um, so hopefully every week I can share with you guys a little bit about what I've been doing. And if I don't do cool things, I won't have anything to share with you. And I'll feel super lame about it. Um, so this is kind of me holding myself accountable for using my time wisely while I'm here. I think this is a good time to lay down some goals that I have for my time here. Um, so my number one goal is to become conversational in Chinese. Uh, I think hoping for anything more than just like basic conversational proficiency in only three months is unrealistic. Um, but I think in three months I can get to the point where I can sit down and have kind of just casual small talk with a stranger. Um, and that's really all that I want. Uh, I was here traveling this summer and I met so many amazing, wonderful people. Um, and I had a great time as long as we could speak a little English together. Um, and so I feel like I kind of missed out on meeting the other 70% of people who aren't really comfortable speaking English. Um, and I also felt terrible because I was a stupid foreigner who didn't know any, anything about their language. Um, and I was kind of hoping that they would speak my language instead of me learning theirs. Um, so I think that in three months I can get to the point where I can speak enough Chinese to sit down with someone who speaks no English and still get ideas across. Um, and that's really what I'm hoping for. That being said, Chinese is more challenging than any of the languages I've looked at up, to, up until now. Um, I think the main reason is that it has nothing to do with English. Uh, some things are similar, like the ordering of sentences sometimes lines up with English ordering. Um, but there's really no similarities between the languages. Uh, when I studied Spanish, I can guess a lot of words. Um, so for example, the, the Spanish word for university is universidad, which sounds a lot like university, universidad. But here the word for university is dashue, which means big school. Um, so there's really no room to like fudge the language. You can't guess, you can't make up words, and no one will understand you. Another thing that makes Chinese difficult is the tones. Um, so there are four tones, and they're essential to communication. So if you know the sound of a word, like the, the Romanized spelling, but you don't know the tone, there's no guarantee that people have any idea what you're talking about. Um, so if you want to actually communicate, you have to memorize the sound, and the tone, and if you want to be able to read or write the word, you have to memorize the character, which often has no phonetic correlation to the word itself. So these things together make Chinese a little more difficult than anything I've looked at. Um, 
But at the same time, it's really exciting to look at a, a language from a whole new perspective and kind of take this back to basics approach where I really have to learn like the core fundamentals of the language before I can start building on it, um, which is something I haven't done in four or five years or since I started learning Spanish a long time ago. Um, so it's really exciting to come back to that. So what have I done so far? Um, the number one thing has been kind of getting into the swing of my Chinese classes. I bought the books, started the classes, been studying a lot, uh, started writing, which is so, so hard, um, but I'm getting there. Uh, I met a lot of really cool people at the Chinese Language Center. There's some people with insanely good Chinese there. Uh, so it's, it's a good group of people to, to hang out with. And the school also does a lot of cultural things, like uh, they took us on a field trip around the city to show us some old sites around the town. Um, and so it's a really good, a really good place. One really interesting experience that I had here was celebrating Christmas. Um, so Taiwan is not a majority Christian country. Um, and so Christmas here is nothing like it was in the United States. Um, they still have like Christmas trees and I saw some carolers and people playing music in the street. But this whole idea of taking time off for Christmas and getting together with your family, having a huge meal, um, it just doesn't really exist. So like Christmas day, I went to class just like any other day. Um, and that was that. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see how there's this, there's this holiday that exists all over the world, like all these different countries celebrate it, but each country kind of celebrates it in its own way and to a different extent. Um, so it's kind of cool to see that. I also attended a Christmas party. Uh, my friend's dad is a university professor here and so he was nice enough to invite me along to his laboratory's uh, Christmas party. So I sat around and tried to speak Chinese for, for three hours and ate some really good food, met some really nice people, and uh, also got a chance to play some guitar, which was super fun. The weekend before this one, uh, I went up to Taichung. I have some friends who live there and uh, I hung out with them for the weekend. Um, while I was there, I met this guy named Mark, who's an American student studying in Taipei, um, who speaks absolutely brilliant Chinese. Uh, he's been studying for six or seven years, um, but it was so insanely good that my friend said he didn't even have an accent anymore when he spoke. Um, so it was super fun to hang out with him and kind of see like, okay, maybe, maybe if I work really, really hard, I can be there one day. But he was able to teach me a lot since he had gone through the whole process of learning the language himself. And so he was really helpful um, answering my questions and kind of giving me some things to work on um, while I'm here. Uh, also while I was in Taichung, I saw something that made me kind of upset. Uh, so I wanted to take a second and address it. Um, we were sitting in a bar with some friends, having a nice drink, and I saw these two American guys who were just the worst kind of tourists. Um, they were yelling, they were making inappropriate comments to the bartender. Um, they were swearing at this poor Taiwanese guy and laughing because he didn't understand what they were saying. Um, so I just want to remind people that when you travel, you are a guest in that country. Like, it's, it's not your home, it's not your culture, it's not your language, and you're really in no position to act like an idiot. Um, also, no matter where you go in the world, you're acting as an ambassador for, for everyone else from your country. Um, so if you're an American and you travel somewhere, you're representing 300 million other Americans um, who don't need you going around and acting like a fool. Um, so I just want to remind people that you should really be careful uh, when you go to other countries. And you should do your best to show people that you appreciate their culture and their home. One really easy thing you can do is just learn four words in their language. Hello, goodbye, thank you, and I'm sorry. Um, even if you can't express full ideas, just showing someone that you appreciate their language and their culture enough to learn the basics can really take you far. This last weekend I went down to Kenting, which is a city in the south of Taiwan, uh, to celebrate New Year's. Uh, Kenting is kind of a, a tourist town. There's like a beautiful beach and uh, the streets were lined with street vendors, the whole town, just one long street. So we just spent the whole night walking down, chatting with people um, and eating all this delicious food. Uh, then at midnight we went down to the beach and um, saw the fireworks. And then we stayed up for the rest of the night to take a bus up to another beach in the morning and watch the first sunrise of the year. Um, so it was really, really fun. Uh, I was hanging out with some friends who live in Taichung, but they came down to Kenting um, and it was a blast. Anyway, uh, that's about it for these two weeks. Um, I'm going to try to post a video every week, um, so if anyone seeing this video has recommendations of places I should go or suggestions for my time here, I'd love to hear them. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Uh, I made it mainly for my friends and family, but 
to anyone else who's interested in Taiwan and traveling in general, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, thank you.